Okay, here's a really good exercise for practicing some, uh, animating masks in After Effects. I'm double clicking in the project window and let's just bring in an image here. Let's try Elena. And here's a PNG that I'm going to drag onto this composition icon that's going to allow me to start uh, working on motion graphics, working on animation within a composition. Okay. Now, when I drag this PNG onto this composition icon, I'll be creating a new composition with the exact resolution of the image that I dragged in there. So we can see in the upper left-hand corner here, that's 532 pixels wide by 318 pixels high. Okay. This is just a screenshot I took of, of the painting online so it's a small resolution now if for some people just dragging this onto the composition icon you might end up having a much longer composition like 30 seconds long my last composition i worked on was only three seconds long so my timeline's pretty short i suggest working on a short a short timeline so to shorten your timeline make sure you select that new composition that was created right click or control click i also like to use the keyboard command command k to get to the composition settings and after you hit command k or or right click or control click to get to your composition settings look for the duration attribute okay most likely that your default duration is going to be 30 seconds long and it's kind of annoying when you look at this value because there's like semicolons in there I recommend just highlighting everything and type 300. Okay, don't even worry about any semicolons, any colons. Don't worry about extra zeros. Just type 300, click OK, and your composition will be three seconds long. Okay, here we go. Inside my composition window, I'm going to hit Command D, and that'll duplicate my layer. I will hit Return to rename this top layer eyelids. And here's where I use the pen tool to start masking off some eyelids. Okay. I'm using comma or period to zoom in. I'll use spacebar, click and drag to move my canvas around. And before I start masking off eyelids, I think it's a really good idea to solo the layer. Okay. Um, the only reason I'm suggesting soloing the layer is so that after I click five times, that's, that's my fourth click, the fifth click is to close the path. The reason I'm suggesting to solo the layer is so that I don't end up seeing the, the rest of the painting underneath. If it was unsoloed, sometimes it's a, a little bit harder to confirm that I did indeed create a mask. Okay, so soloing the layer is pretty useful. Uh, leaving it unsoloed is useful for creating my second eyelid. Click, second click and drag to add those bezier handles. Third click, fourth click, and then fifth click, I close the mask. Let's solo it and just double check everything looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna move these masks into position. So I'll hit the letter P and I can scrub my Y value pretty easy to just move them up into position. Alternatively, I could hit the letter V, V as in Victor, to activate my selection tool. And then I could just carefully click and drag the position. Uh, you have to be really careful when you're using the selection tool. If you click near a mask, you'll probably end up selecting a point and moving an anchor point. So when I'm, when I'm moving this layer of eyelids, what I do is I carefully select inside this mask. All right. So here I go, just positioning those eyelids. The next move is to keyframe the shape of the mask changing, thus creating a blinking character. In order to animate the mask changing shape, I need to keyframe an attribute called mask path. So I'll hit the letter M and there's my two masks. 
I think it's a good idea to rename these masks. The yellow one is the left eye, screen left eye. So I hit return, calling this left eye mask just to stay organized. The other mask is right eye mask. Sometimes I'll color code these masks based on if it's on the right or left side. So since the word right starts with the letter R, I'll choose red, which is a color that starts with the letter R. What's a color that starts with the letter L? Lavender. Okay, let's choose lavender. All right. I'm moving my timeline somewhere in the middle of the composition, and I'm just going to immediately keyframe both mask paths. So the shape of both of these eyelids is now recorded. I'm going to hold command and use my left arrow key one, two, three times. I'm still, I'm still using my selection tool. As you can see in the upper left hand corner, I've activated my selection tool. And what I'll do is just click and drag on this, this one point. Okay. Uh, I've noticed that occasionally all your mask points might be selected and it's it's kind of frustrating. You try to move one mask point and you end up moving your whole mask. Let me hit Command Z to undo that. If all your mask points are selected and you want to just move one individual point, then please just click off of that mask somewhere, then click back on that one point. And when I move that mask point, I've immediately created another keyframe. Okay, so it's always a good idea to test out your animation. I could hit spacebar to play, but I can also just hold down command and use my left and right arrow keys to scrub through the animation one frame at a time. Looks good. One, two, three. I need to hold this closed position. I need to hold this closed eye shape for a few frames, you know, so it's, it's not too fast of an eye blink. And I will copy and paste the second column of keyframes, Command C, Command V. So now for three frames, there's no change in that shape. One, two, three. I'm adding my fourth column of keyframes, which is the open position. So let me just copy and paste those, those uh, keyframes from the first column. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, hit spacebar. And there I've animated two eyelids, two eyelid masks and characters blinking, looks alive. Okay, I recommend practicing this multiple times with different images.